Welcome to the Beyond Sober podcast, where transformation begins and recovery is redefined. Featuring your host, Cody Rain, your favorite ex-alcoholic, liver failure survivor, and dedicated recovery coach. Here, we don't just focus on sobriety, we focus on true recovery, helping you to rediscover yourself beyond the clutches of toxicity. Join our community, embrace the change, and let's redefine your life together. This is Life Beyond Sobriety. Ding dong, bing boom. Welcome to another episode of Beyond Sober, recorded live right here on TikTok. What are you doing, dude? What are you up to, bro? Girl, which you've you been making that magic happen. You haven't been sipping alcohol this entire time. You thought you'd never hear from me. You thought you'd never see me again, man. When in reality, it's just the kids going back to school. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying Michigan's a little crazy. The allergies be be popping off, dude. You know how many allergy pills I've been taking, dude? You know how much? You know what? You know how hot it's been. You know how it's been drip drop out here, dude. Like it, it's I look at this little baby fan. It is so it's so hot that I've had to resort. These little tiny, little tiny fans, man. <laughs> it gets the job done, but it's, you know, I'll take what I can get. What is up, dude? I'm so stoked to see you. So stoked to hear from you. There's been so many people celebrating their sobriety and their recovery. My homie just hit a thousand days, dude. What the banana set? A thousand days, not just not drinking, but a thousand days beyond sober. A thousand days beyond just going, hey, you know what, maybe I should just like, you know, take a break from the sauce. No, they literally transformed their life, dude. And here you are, 420, trying my day one again. How you doing? How's it working? You doing all right? You feeling okay? What space are you in when you're attempting this? Okay, you gotta remember this. When it comes to alcohol, it takes four days for alcohol to process out of your body. And at that point, you're just as sober as anybody else. Just as sober as me, I haven't consumed alcohol in over seven years. I'm not more sober than you because there's the same amount of alcohol in my body as there is in your body. It's zero. Clinically, you go to a hospital, you go to a doctor, they say, pee in this cup, bro. Yeah, it, there's nothing in here, man. Maybe they pull a strand of your hair. There may be some inclinations that you may have sipped alcohol in the past 90 days. They pull it out of your blood, that's a different story. But the point is, is it takes four days for your body to kick alcohol's ass, get it out of your body. But most people, like the people in my inbox today, going like, hey dude, I can't make it past day three, can't make it past day four. Hey, I always relapse at day five. No, you don't, bro. No, you don't. you're not relapsing at day five. You're choosing to drink, dude. Technically, you've been only clinically sober for one day. It's probably one of the most uncomfortable days you've had in quite a long time. Of course, you were thinking about alcohol, but if you keep saying, I always relapse at day five, bro, I can't do it. You're right, bro. You are right. Your brain doesn't know that you're lying to it. Your brain doesn't know what it can and can't do. It thinks that every single thing you're saying to it is the facts. It's an idiot, dude. Your brain is a lump of jello in a dark room. Why are you talking crap to yourself? It's gonna take it seriously, dude. <laughs> you think people in recovery are out here going, hey man, got so many days since my last drink. No one cares. We care about how well you're making these days count. What have you been doing, dude? You haven't increased your chicken? You haven't gone for any extra walks? The only thing you've done is sat naked in a beanbag chair eating Cheetos? That's it? That's the peak of your recovery journey? Bro, you probably feel exactly the same, which is the issue. People always go like, hey, dude, I can't stay sober. Bro, you're not healing. <laughs> you're the same exact person doing the same exact things, maybe trying some new things, but not enough to get you to shift from a physiological, neurological standpoint where your body goes, this is how we roll now, bro. We're a happy, healthy person doing happy, healthy things, or we're a semi-unhealthy person practicing healthy things for a little while. I promise you, dude, there's never been a single person that optimized their brain and body after quitting drinking that didn't figure it out forever. They either realize that alcohol isn't gonna add value, and in doing so, they're like, I'm just not gonna drink it. I remember the good old times. I might like a drink from time to time, but I don't, because eh, I don't need three extra days of anxiety. Or people that were struggling with addiction transformed their physiological structures and neuro, the neuroplasticity kicked in so hard that they're literally a different person that doesn't want alcohol and they broke their addictive behaviors. 18 days sober, that's the longest in living memory. AA didn't work for me. Hey, Caleb, I can't even tell you how many people, you see this? 
They don't teach this in AA. Why won't they teach this in AA? It's because it helps you recover. Because once you go through this, you'll never go back. You'll never go back. Now, here's the crazy part. I, it, AA didn't work for me either. Now, I'm not crapping on AA, but I did just ask GPT yesterday, how much money does AA make? And it said uh, about $25 million a year? Dang, dude. And why don't people enjoy going to AA? Why do people prefer Beyond? I asked GPT this. Why do pre people prefer Beyond Sober opposed to AA? And it says because of its forced perspectives and what was the other thing? And its low success rate. <laughs> people don't grow in a box, dude. We're all living in our own box up here anyway, and we're trying to survive that, Maylee. We're trying to survive the own prison we put ourselves in. So what we're gonna do is go put ourselves into another one full of a bunch of other people doing no better than we are. Yeah, I know we're cool now because our pain is equal because your story is kind of like mine. I somewhat feel seen, but fe feeling seen isn't the same as seeing yourself as someone healthier and stronger, dude. This is where it's at, dude. This right here, radical acceptance, dude. Breaking all those bad habits, developing new healthy habits, dude. Staying out of your past, dude. 10Xing your success and building a life beyond sobriety. You focus in those six areas, technically you only need one. You're guaranteed to have a brain, a body, and an environment that you enjoy existing in, dude. When you're, when you're happy, dude. It is, sobriety is effortless. <laughs> it's when you're miserable and not a fan of yourself when things feel like impossible, dude. It's been two weeks since I drank, I feel good. I feel good. I love that for you, dude. I just put a video out today about the neurological transformations that happen in your brain and body once you stop drinking. Alcohol is a, it's a poison, it's a toxin, it is, it is a literal drug, it destroys over 3 million lives every single year. And we're taught to drink it like it's Gatorade, or what is this? Yeah, Gatorade, it's like just sip it. You know what, just put a little bit of gasoline in this. <laughs> you won't feel so bad after a little while. You won't feel the pain, but you will be causing it. You, you, not only will you not feel the pain, you won't care about the pain in general. So what's a one more step, right? We'll just, we'll just spike the Gatorade, I'm getting hydrated. I'm telling you, dude, we are taught from birth, dude. Some of us were born drunk. <laughs> How to drink exactly the same way an alcoholic would. And I'm gonna say this to you. You do not need to be an alcoholic to practice alcoholic behavior, but you do have to practice alcoholic behavior to become an alcoholic, dude. That's just how it goes. You don't have to be an Olympian to practice what Olympians do, but you do have to practice what Olympians do to become an Olympian. That's just how it works, dude. So when we stop destroying ourselves, our brain, our body, one of the most resilient creatures ever made in the history of all history, aside from like a cockroach, uh, bounces back, dude. It, it does what it's supposed to do and starts healing itself. This is why people ask me, what's it like living with stage four cirrhosis? 111 over here. Hey, do me a favor. When we see those triple numbers, just hit the screen. Yeah, I'm, this is to help other people find this specific live. I don't know what I'm gonna say. I just spitball, I pick a random shirt, throw on a random Beyond Sober hat and say a bunch of things, man. But every single time I go live, somebody hears what they didn't know they needed to hear. I'm just freestyling my thoughts, man. I'm responding to your comments. Some people hang out because they look like Polly Shore. Other people hang out because I've got the programs. I offer coaching, dude. The book is on the way. The Beyond Sober book is on the way. I'm an international best-selling author. I've worked with thousands of people in one-on-one -on -one with hundreds since my liver failed in 2017. That was a long time ago, but I'm still here and kicking. The reason I say this is because people look at me and go, there's no way you're 39, bro. You're almost 40? <laughs> what? You drank alcohol for 24 years? You did 30 years of damage in 15 years? Your heart stopped, bro? Your liver straight up failed, man. You have the same liver. What do you mean you had neuropathy and couldn't use your legs? What do you mean it took you 18 months to recover? What do you mean you were throwing up blood? There was blood in your stool, blood in your vomit. What do you mean you remember what it feels like to die? What are you talking about, bro? You, you're t seriously telling me you lost your house, car, job, money, friends, bro? You became a felon? You caught a felony while drunk and it's been haunting you ever since? Even though you're, you're a completely different person? Not even the same at all in any capacity? Yeah, dude, because I'm beyond sober, bro. <laughs> I've put out over 5,000 videos just here on TikTok. 
I'm working with people every single day. Sometimes people just need a reminder that sobriety exists and it's okay to be not just sober, but get beyond it. Some people wanna get a sticker to remind them to drink water, dude, because it's the nectar of life. Other people just wanna feel supported, feel seen, feel recognized, and feel noticed, man. So I continue to show up to let you know that I see you, I feel you, I notice you. You are recognized and I appreciate you, dude. I want you to know that you are my idols, man. I am your biggest fans. You are the one doing the work and I want you to do it better than me. I'm 25 now. Um, how would I know if I have cirrhosis? That's a good question. In, in all actuality, you're gonna have to go to a doctor. Um, you can't just like look at the mirror and go like, well, is my right side swelling? Is there a pain? Is that cirrhosis? Here's a, a, another video I put out recently. Um, Murdo. <laughs> um, another video I put out recently is, is exactly this. This is, this is as simple as it is. If you've been drinking alcohol for a long period of time, right, above casually, as in more than three or four drinks a day, if you've been drinking to get drunk, drinking to black out, you've been partying a lot, it's a part of your daily intake. It's considered one of your friends. If alcohol has been a part of your life, even casually, whether you like it or not, you've been causing damage. It's a fact. It is a fact. Where do you think your anxiety is coming from? Where do you think your depression comes from? That's from neurological damage and the alcohol infusing itself into your cells. It's been, it's literally eating the white and the gray matter in your brain. You've been shrinking your brain, getting dumber. Why do you think we all act like idiots when we've had too much, dude? Alcohol is a literal neurotoxin that we overdose on. It shuts your organs down. It'll stop your heart. People literally, lives change overnight. You've been causing damage. To the extent of which you've been causing damage comes down to the amount of alcohol you've been drinking, how healthy you are, your gender and age do come into play, and I'll talk about this in a little bit. But the point is, is if you've been practicing any type of alcoholic behavior, you've been hurting yourself. Alcohol is trauma. It's a literal gasoline, Tonya. Tanya, it's ethanol. It's what's in gasoline that makes it blow up, dude. They measure the proof of alcohol. What's the proof? They practice the alcohol by volume, ABV, by how well it explodes. It explodes at 80% capacity. Boom, it's 80 proof. That's 40% alcohol. We're not sitting here going like, oh my God, it's just, it, it tastes like lemonade. Lemonade, gasoline with a lemonade twist to it. No pun intended. You've been causing damage, okay? Now, some people like myself, we're causing so much damage that the only way to get through, what up girl, Daryl Spicy Mama, what up girl? So stoked to see you. If you saw that love just come through, this is one of my favorite people on the planet. She is a boss, you definitely wanna follow her. She's one of the coolest people. My partner, Emily and I, we speak to her all the time. We're working together. She's been through some of the most incredible transformations. She's lost over a hundred and like eight pounds, dude. When I, you see the neuro spicy mama, she's recently diagnosed with with the uh, with the uh, with the uh, with the ADHDs like me. She she started her journey when she was 18, but on and off for years. Yeah, breezy. Yeah, dude, that's that's killer, dude. So check it out. You see her, I want you to follow her. I want you to support her. She's gonna start sharing her stories. You're gonna see so much transformation, dude. When you go to her page, I want you to look at, at what she looked like before and what she looks like now. She's got babies, dude. She's, dude, she's killing it. And I'm so thankful that I get a chance to work with her personally. We chat almost every single day. She's trying Thrive Nutrition right now. She's trying to get off the ADHD medication and go the more natural route like we do here. So I tell you this, man, she's one of those people that you wanna keep um, close to. She's a good human, great person, big supporter, big fan of Beyond Sober, and I'm so stoked I get to work with her every single day. Back to cirrhosis, though. So the trip is, is you're never gonna know how much damage has been caused until you talk to a doctor. And usually they're gonna do it through an ultrasound. That ultrasound, they'll put it on your side, they'll go like, okay, it looks a little hard here, a little dense here. It looks like it's, you know, it's, it's hardened, darkened, like, they, like an ultrasound, like a baby. You've got a liver baby. <laughs> Depending how big that liver is, you're gonna get a different result and a different response from the doctor. So there's a lot of people, a lot of people, almost every single person is afraid to find out how much damage they've done, okay? 
listen to what I'm saying. Nobody wants to know that the way they've been practicing self-care has been making things worse. I'm, it, it doesn't matter how healthy you are or how quote unquote damaged you are, you don't wanna know the extent of the damage that you've been causing. Because it, the truth is, if you knew better or could do better, you would do better. We were all taught to treat the wound with another problem. This is why when my dad used to say, I used to like hurt my ankle and then he'd sock me in the shoulder and go like, does your ankle hurt now? What he's trying to tell me is that like, if you distract yourself from the pain you're in, where is the pain? Is the pain still there? Are you still, pre are you still if you're not focusing on it, where is it, right? So we weren't allowed to complain and granted, he was drunk most of the time, so like what he was talking about was insane. But I understand his concepts as a healthy as a healthy person. Okay, so my point with this is we're taught to not just sock ourselves in the shoulder. We're taught to drink about it. When we drink about it, we may ignore the pains or the emotions or the circumstances or the feelings that are that actually need our attention. But we're also causing damage. We're going to need to heal from later. So it is this very interesting give and take. I'll tell you this, and I'm gonna put things out drastically for you. We're gonna talk about withdrawals right now, and we're gonna talk about like physical ailments, okay? This is how you know if it's gone too far, okay? One of the major conversations that's being had right now is withdrawals. I'm gonna say this, a majority of the people that are spreading this information, specifically on TikTok, are fear-mongering. They want you to be afraid. They believe wholeheartedly that the, the more afraid you are, don't, 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 do a quick whole turkey. The more afraid you are, the more they're helping you transform. They're making it worse. Do you know why? If you don't feel safe enough, strong enough, and supported enough to take care of yourself, you're going to make it worse. You're gonna make it worse. How do I know this? I'm an ex-alcoholic. How did I become an alcoholic? By fear-mongering. Everyone that didn't know shit about fuck, excuse my language, was telling me that I was gonna die, that my eyes were gonna turn yellow, that I was gonna do a bit of all this stuff. And I was like, I don't like that. Alcohol is how I manage those thoughts that you're giving me. You're implanting it in my head. I don't have anxiety management tools outside of alcohol. So when you tell me that I'm about to die and if I don't do this now, I'm gonna die. And if this is my liver and then like all that, dude, I'm just gonna go home and drink about it. I'm gonna pretend like we never ever had that conversation. And here's what happened. I took that literally. I didn't know I had ADHD at the time. I didn't have any other tools. And I took that literally by bartenders. And then I just literally drank until I could not stop or I would have withdrawals. I was barely having withdrawals. Here's the trip. Here's the trippy trip of all trippy trips. This is why certain people do not need your attention. You know who knows what they're talking about. Here's the thing. You're going to have the exact same symptoms, almost identical, from a long night out. You go party with Cindy Lauper, dude. You go hit up Vegas, and you're partying with Celine Dion, even though she's got that thing that's going on. You go drink and you party, guess what's gonna happen? You're probably gonna shake a little bit. You're going to, as your nervous system regulates itself because it's on hyperdrive, you're gonna have the shakes. Who else has the shakes when they stop drinking? Alcoholics, are you an alcoholic because you woke up and you're shaking a little bit? Do you have a full-blown addiction because you're slightly shuddering? The answer is no. And the reason for that is I doubt that night with Cindy Lauper was the night you had that one drink too far and now you have an addiction and now you're dependent. So when we're talking about all of these very, very important physiological details, determining the difference between poisoning yourself and literally developing an addiction, it is so important we understand the nuances of these things because if you think that just because you shake you have an addiction and now you have to keep drinking or else, guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna keep drinking or else. Blood pressure is high, mine is slightly too because of cirrhosis. If you can't tell that your insomnia is because of the caffeine from the night before and your brain on overdrive and alcohol causing insomnia, you're going to assume that you need alcohol or else you're going to practice the, the behaviors that create the dependency that you're afraid of. This is a self-fulfilling prophecy. This is why I show up and go like, guess who? 
knows what they're talking about. Been there, done that. I've helped countless people through the withdrawals. My homie right now, Roman, dude, if he's, maybe he's in here. Dude, this dude is on today, day 14. We were chatting just on TikTok. Hey bro, drink your water, do this. He's describing what's happening. Right, you've been doing this for a long time. You're going through full on withdrawals. You haven't been eating, bro. Your calories have been coming from alcohol. You haven't been drinking water. Your hydration's been coming from the scotch, from the ice at the bottom of the glass. You're not hydrated, bro. You, you see what I'm saying? His body was going through full on withdrawals, not to the extent of needing a doctor, but we put one on call. I said, dude, what's up, Anna Elizabeth? How you doing, girl? I was just thinking about you today. Hey, you guys wanna follow Anna Elizabeth too. She's one of my favorite people on the planet. Actually, NeuroSpicy Mama and Anna Elizabeth, very similar human beings, equally as cool. You guys should definitely know each other. So stoked to see you, girl. So the point with this is we were able to get him on his own accord through actual withdrawals to the point where he's 14 days sober, hasn't felt better, he still continues. What's up, Cactus, man? So good to see you, brother. He's still acclimating into not having alcohol in his body, so he still has a little bit of anxiety, so he's drinking some more water. He's resting. He's not He's not going banana sandwiches on all that caffeine, okay? He's keeping it chill. He's practicing breathing techniques, okay? He's putting on some soft, chill music. He's tricking his nervous system that it's not so scary. There's nothing to really worry about. But he is through his withdrawals. Now, here's the gnarliest part about that. The dude thought he was gonna die. The dude thought, just like everybody else, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to go to rehab, bro. Do I need to go to detox, man? Do I need to call a doctor? Dude, I can't, man. I can't lose my kids, man. I can't lose my job. I can't, dude. You're scared. I get it, bro. But it's the alcohol that's creating this unrealistic, amplified fear, and that fear is keeping you drinking. Alcohol is a narcissist. It needs you to need it. So it's going to actively attempt to screw with every single part of your brain and your body and your environment so you never let it go. You prioritize it as number one. Now that it's realizing it's not getting your attention anymore, it's starting to go like, hey bro, remember we're best friends. What's up Amanda? We're best friends, dude. You need me, bro, you need me. And you're going, nah, dude, no. That is an interesting internal conflict physiologically speaking, but also emotionally too. You're losing one of your closest friends, the person that's been there through everything, alcohol. Been there when you were sad, been there when you were upset, been there when you were bitter, been there when you were celebrating. Bro, of course you're going through a shift, but that doesn't mean you're going to need medical assistance. In regards to your withdrawals, Riley, thank you. Uh, in regards to re withdrawals, these are, these are just the facts. These are just the analytics, okay? Only 30% of people that drink alcohol practice alcoholic behavior. Randy Lee, what's up? Listen to what I'm saying. 30% of people. Only 60% of the planet drinks alcohol. That means like 40% of the earth sucks. <laughs> Not really. They're sober. Sober sucks. So, so, so There's a lot of sober people that hate themselves. So 40% of the planet is sober, naturally. They don't drink, don't wanna drink, used to drink, don't drink anymore, whatever. The rest of the 60 do drink, okay? Now 70% of them drink casually, drink normal, drink regular, don't drink at high risk. They drink every single day maybe. Maybe they have a healthy relationship with alcohol. Maybe they only get drunk once at a blue moon. The point is is that they don't not drink and they're not sober. They're, they're not trying to stay away. They can drink and they may drink every day for the rest of their life and have a, a, a glass of scotch on their deathbed. They're not practicing alcoholic behavior. It's the other 30% that fell into those series of events that led us towards embracing the poison under the belief and teachings that it will help. We, that became our best friend. I miss you, Shari. That became our best friend. So we started drinking exactly the same way an alcoholic would. Some of us developed over time, many years, doing the same behavior repeatedly, an addiction or a severe dependency, okay? Now, those 30% of people, not, not most of those, only 50% of those people are going to have withdrawals, okay? When they stop, even though they're practicing alcoholic behavior, if they put the drink down today, only 50% of those people with an extremely high tolerance that drink all the time,
that get drunk, that black out, that do all of the things, only 50% of them are going to need a doctor. I'm telling you, there's a very, very slim margin here of people that are gonna have such severe withdrawals that it is life-threatening. This is so important to understand, dude, because people think that anytime you go through withdrawals, it is a worst case scenario. Most people have already been through their withdrawals. On that topic, here's how you know if you're gonna need life, like saving assistance. Your, the peak of your withdrawals are gonna usually happen about eight hours after your last drink. So let's just say your last drink was at midnight last night. You woke up at 8 a.m. today to get the kids to school. You were an hour late and you weren't shaking. You weren't literally convulsing. You were straight, you were fine. You just had to sip your water. Maybe you had a little tremors, right? Maybe you were sweating a little bit. Whatever happened in that eight hours, that's basically the peak of what you're gonna experience. After that, in the next like 48 hours, the alcohol is literally getting out of your body. Because the alcohol is escaping, being processed out by your liver, you're becoming less numb. Because you're less numb to the same exact symptoms, it seems and it feels like it's getting worse. It's not, dude. You're just not numb anymore. <laughs> so this is why people go like, oh, it's the worst day three. Day three is when you're the least amount of numb before it's entirely out of your body, okay? So I say this to go, if you haven't already had extreme withdrawals within eight to 48 hours after your last drink, you're a good dude. The, don't I'm not a doctor. This isn't medical advice. This is general information that can help you determine your likelihood of needing medical assistance. Now, we're just gonna say this too. Even if you were to start having life-threatening circumstances, the chances of you not getting the support you need is very low. This is why I can't even tell you how many times people are in my inbox going, the doctors turned me away. Yeah, it's because you're not dying. <laughs> I went there to detox and they told me to go home and wait. Yeah because you are not in a life-threatening circumstance. You party too hard. You were binging for four days, bro. Like you, you done messed your shit up. Like that's really just what it is. Stop doing that. <laughs> when people go like, I don't know how to stop. Yes, you do. I don't know how to get sober. Put the drink down, wait four days. That's it. That's how long it takes to get sober. It's the staying sober that people have struggles with, which is why I give certificates just like that, why we have programs to make sure that there's no lapses, there's no relapses, and if there is, you're cool and confident and collected and supported enough to not actually develop a new pattern that's gonna bring you back down the rabbit hole. That's what recovery is, dude. That's the whole point of it. That's why I continue to show up and create the videos and, and work with people in the program is because I don't want you to feel like you're not seen. I don't want you to feel like your circumstances are so astronomically unique that you're the one that can't do it. You're not the one. You're not the one that can't do it, dude. I wish you were. I wish you were the one. Salfron, I wish you were the one that couldn't do it because we could study you and then we learn how to do it better. I'm going sober because of you. Oh my goodness, I love you so much and you completely changed my, I'm gonna see if I, what this button does, perspective. <laughs> That is so awesome. Um, I'll, I'll tell you this, dude, you're going sober because of you. I had nothing to do with your actions. I may have been an influence. And first off, I'm gonna practice saying thank you real quick, because I know it's important, thank you. I work very hard every single day. And if you guys haven't seen me in a while, obviously I look a little bit bigger, been putting in some work, been eating differently, thinking differently, working out differently, d d building differently. I'm nonstop on this stuff. But my point is, is I continue to grow to continue to share what works for me in the hopes that you find success in one of these perspectives. Everything is a perspective. Everything you're saying to yourself, you're saying it because you believe it. Everything you're not saying to yourself, you're not saying because you don't want to believe it. Even the things that are good for you, you've been practicing shunning them away, which is why right now I'm practicing going, thank you. It's sometimes as, e as good as I feel that I am, and as much as I practice, and as the thousands of people I've worked with, and everything I've said, I still, as a human being, struggle to take compliments. I struggle for people to shake my hand because I know the truth comes down to you. 
You're doing the work. You did the work. All I did is pave the way. You didn't have to take the step, yet you did. You're my inspiration. You're the reason why I work harder. You showing up for you, you being exactly who you are, you surviving in the ways that you have and developing that deep resilience that most people will never be privileged enough to have because they'll never go through your struggle. They'll never survive what you've been through. You're my hero because you continue to show up. I'm literally cheering you on every single day. I want you to continue growing, which is why I give you everything I have. Do it, take it, do it better. Make a bigger program, dude. Help more people. There's purpose in all of this stuff. No, it's not a step that you have to do. You don't have to like volunteer at the, at the hospital. You don't need to help older women cross the street or else you're not serving your purpose. Shut the front door. The point is, is that you've prioritized yourself and a simple shift in the way that I looked at myself has simply helped you open your world to a perspective that helps you take care of you. I don't care if you drink, dude. <laughs> I care if you care about yourself. I care if you're even pretending to care about yourself because the better you take care of you, the better you are for all of us, dude. We all get the benefit from you kicking all that ass, dude. That's next level. Super proud of you. Almost 500 diamonds on this stream. Is there really? Eric, oh my goodness. Speaking of which, hey, this is a perfect time. Hey, dude, we got, we, we got things to say, bro. You see Eric recovered vet right here. I don't know what this is. I don't know how you can, can I can whoop, 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 some, some magic's happening, dude. Do you see Eric? Eric, you need to put your name up, dude. Eric just celebrated 1,000 days, bro. 1,000 days! Not just sober, but beyond sober. Holy gee, what was that? Is that a cockatoo? Loud noises. Oh my goodness gracious, dude. I'm so proud of Things you. Things are happening. Eric's in the building, dude. I, oh, no. okay. Oh my gosh, hi. Hey, check this out. Hey. Speaking of Eric, I'll show you. I'll show what? you, Eric. You, the, the, the gentleman right here, I, got this. I want you to look at this. This is Eric. Hold up. See, he's, he's so badass, he's even on the website, dude. Look at this. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Look at this right here. Look at this. That's it. Look at that. What is that? That's the old Eric, man. That is the new badass dude. If you that, saw the new video of him yeah. that's saying that he's now been sober for a thousand days, they would understand the difference in his clarity, his eyes, everything. He's, dude, he's a whole new person. But Eric is a, a war veteran, man. He's a straight up G, bro. He's been through things that we couldn't ever possibly imagine going through. And, um, whoop, and he is straight up, like, just taking things to the next level, dude. I'm so, so, so proud of him. He likes to give me credit. I like to practice taking it and trying to get this thing to work. Uh, but dude, he, he's a, a veteran support. So you or someone you know is a veteran struggling with sobriety, struggling in recovery. You just want to talk to someone, relate to somebody. Eric is the man right there. Such an incredible human. He's got babies. He's married. He's He's got the life, dude. His little baby just turned one. Is that what it was? Yeah. Oh, Damn, that is gangster, dude. Yeah. Polar Bear Express, what's up, dude? Um, you're having one year anniversary next week. Anniversary for what? For sobriety, dude? Like one year sober? Um, when you're at, when you're, I see you, bro. I see you. 22 days, John, dude, that's killer. So check this out, man. Roughly sex, sex, six weeks in to your sobriety journey, your body is basically going to, of course, all the alcohol is out of your body. But on another note, your brain is starting to rewire itself. It's the neuroplasticity is kicking in. It's creating new neural connections. Eric, you know what this feels like too, bro. You've got all that brain fog and it's not working well for you. And then you slowly start to realize that things smell a little bit, a little bit deeper. You start to taste a little bit more. Dude. Things are getting a little bit brighter. You're able to focus. You're able to go like, am I happy, dude? I don't know if I'm happy or not. I, I'm not not happy, but this is weird. Like. Whoa, 22 days in, man, is next level. So I also wanna say, dude, Eric made a thousand, thousand days, right? Mm -hmm. Eric isn't more sober than you, dude, John. You, you and Eric are the exact same amount of sober. You're 100% sober. There's no alcohol in your body. Dude, your success at 22 days is equal to Eric's success at a thousand. What, he's, what he can really, really talk about is what he's done since his last drink, dude. That's where people get confused and go like, yeah, but I didn't and he did and we aren't and all those things. 
Nah, bro. Eric has been killing it for 20 years, longer than that. But then after not drinking, continuing to kill it, continuing to show up, continuing to make magic happen. And now he's helping people, helping himself and making all these crazy things happen. That's recovery. And that's what's most important to us. Hang on. Anna Marie, I'm desperate to stop. I don't know what to do with my evenings when I normally drink. Uh, I get you. I was just working with someone a few minutes ago and that was the exact conversation that we had was she's basically saying, I usually drink a couple bottles. I'm down to about three after working with you. I'm gonna get down to zero in the next like month or two. But she says the evenings is when it's most stressful because um, the kids come home and then I have to be a mom and then I have the dinners, and then I'm just getting out of work too. She works from home. So what she was saying, and one of the things that most people do, is they talk about what they don't need to do. They talk about what they don't wanna focus on. Another way of saying that is, you could either focus on Eric looking pretty, taking care of kids, or you could look at him trying not to drink. His goal is not to try not to drink. His goal is to spend more time with the kids. The more time he's spending with the kids, the less time he's spending with the bottle, with the drink. You do that long enough, your brain re rewires itself and goes, hey, normally we think about alcohol, but now we're thinking about the kids. So developing a regimen is really important. And we talk about that in module five of Beyond Sober. And the reason why we do that is there's specific things that you wanna focus on, module five right here, which is, um, it basically tripling down on everything that you love. Anything that could bring you joy, anything that could be fun, any type of hobby, anything you could immerse yourself in, building a schedule, getting a regimen laid out, not because there's something wrong, but because you're optimizing your brain and body, you're optimizing your environment. And in doing so, you find yourself in what's called flow. That flow takes your life to literally the next answer, uh, next answer, uh, next level. Um, the 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 bankies. Do I answer anyone? No, I don't answer anybody, not even once. Uh, what are the beginning symptoms of liver disease? That's a really good question. Um, I'm just kind of going on. Yeah, I see that. Um, the beginning symptoms, dude, could be sweating. <laughs> Uh, darker stool, darker urine, um, obviously not healing well, uh, not getting over colds, cuts, uh, open wounds very well. Um, obviously, once there's cirrhosis that is starting or there's scarring of the liver, you're going to start yellowing and you're going to start having jaundice. But if you don't have that, I mean, it's pretty easy to know that your liver is not working well. Like, it shouldn't yeah. feel like a punch in the back, but if there's a pain or if there's something that's lingering, that's usually a sign too. But again, like he stated earlier before I hopped on here, um, hi, my name is Emily, by the way. Um, <laughs> you, if you're questioning whether your liver is in jeopardy, you're either one, a hypochondriac, and you probably need some um, mental support. <laughs> and that's not a joke because I work with a lot of people that are yeah. off the charts hypochondriac and don't don't look like you'd think they would look. Right. Um, don't operate the way that they that you think they would, but you, sorry, my contact is like a mess. It is so humid and so allergy driven right now in Told Michigan you. and like, <laughs> anyway. Um, and if you're questioning whether your liver is in jeopardy because of the things that you've eaten or prolonged drinking, the chances are your liver is probably not doing great. Right. If you're really, really that upset about not Exhaustion knowing how it is, is another one. Then, then go, pardon me? Exhaustion. Exhaustion, Being yeah. Dude. Not sleeping well, waking up at 3 a.m. is usually is a sign too, but go, go get a blood test. Go talk to a doctor. If you really think that you're starting fatty liver disease, which is what you're gonna have before your liver is really in actual jeopardy and can't be flipped around, and again, that is age-related. It, right. There is only so much time that our human machine can actually operate at full extensive repair and full extensive uh, just operation. Facts. So, I mean, as a former smoker, I still struggle with smoking. Um, I'm not proud of that. It's I'm 42 as of last week, Monday. Hey, Sonny. Only so much time that my that my lungs and my liver are going to work together to keep working all of that out and repair completely to 100%. Facts. If if you keep going and you think that there's a liver problem, figure it out. Definitely yeah. don't lean on someone from TikTok or someone that you don't know. It's really, he gets these questions so much to the fact where I just want to like, 
like face palm myself going <laughs> you're not a, you know what i mean yeah. like, if you're really that concerned go find a way to check that that's yeah that's i put it i put a video out about cirrhosis now cirrhosis and liver disease uh very 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 similar usually you're gonna have cirrhosis extreme at like end stage cirrhosis or just like stage four and end of or a higher amount of stage four cirrhosis it means that there's so much damage done that your liver is just basically shot it's still working but it's like limping along um there's i i can't even tell you this dude like you are going to have so much more uh power speaking to a doctor and I, I know what it's like to feel like a number. I talk to people all the time. They're like, yeah, but they're not nice to me. They're, they're rude. Yeah, you're, you're doing dumb shit. <laughs> you're, you're probably, you, doctors aren't there to hug you, okay? We've met some yeah. really nice doctors and I'm so thankful for the ones that I've had a chance to work with, but they're there to fix you. you you're done messed up, bro. And how you feel about what's been going on doesn't change anything. And this is why, honestly, number one right there is radical acceptance, dude. You have to radically accept it. Without your opinion, without your thoughts, without your wishes, without your hopes, just accept it. You've been drinking a poison, it's been doing damage, or you've been living an unhealthy lifestyle and you've got some pains, you've got some ailments, you're, you're like chronically exhausted. Your eyes don't look that bright anymore. Starting to turn a little yellow. You're starting to wear those sunglasses a little bit more, huh? Is that belly starting to poke out? You're starting to get a little thick around the neck, though? What about up here? Is your throat super sore all the time? Right? You're clearing your throat. You got acid reflux, dude. What do There's your wrists no look like? no definition between here and here ever. Yeah. It's all just sitting in there. Your lymph system is just stuck and full. And <laughs> mm. Yeah. All of those are symptoms that your liver is struggling, dude. Sherry, what's up, girl? We, it's all of those things. The normal amount of pain a human is supposed to experience, guess what it is? Guess what the number is? Do you know? Does anybody know the regular amount of pain the human body is supposed to be in? It's zero, zero pain, zero pain. We only feel pain when there's something wrong. Mary, you know. So if we're in pain, emotional pain, physical pain, psychological pain, spiritual pain, energetic pain, social pain, environmental pain. If something is paining us and getting our attention, it's not because we're supposed to ignore it. It's because we're supposed to take it seriously. Our pains are meant to guide us towards a healthier decision. Now I work with people every single day. I was working with a homegirl a little while ago. She's very sad. She's doing really well. She kind of felt like she relapsed, but in reality, she just went back to doing what she usually does. She didn't go as far as she thought she did, which is totally cool. The point is, is that she thinks that she doesn't deserve to be happy because of something she did a long time ago. She feels that the pain is 100% necessary and it's not. One of her limiting beliefs is the firm commitment that she deserves to be punished when no one else is doing it for her. That was ingrained in her when she was a kid. This is called a political truth. That's not something that she would choose to do to herself. That's not something that she does to her kids. And it's not something that she would wish upon other people. But she has openly and actively committed to what I did deserves pain. And if I'm out of pain, I'm not worthy. I'm only worthy based on the amount of pain I'm willing to suffer through. A lot of people think that's what love is too. <laughs> It's not. Love isn't the amount of pain you're willing to, you know, go through. That's the lack of amount of love you have for yourself, bro. No. So I say all of that just to go. If you have any concerns, dude, talk to a doc. Don't just do some WebMD crap. Yeah. Talk to a doctor, man. Like there's resources on my website too. Like this, this thing is huge. Community resources, dude, public resources, free tools. The program's accessible, three programs, four programs on there. Access to me. Dude, you could join the Beyond Supper program and then we could chat for an hour. I will call a doctor with you. <laughs> You've gotta know how well you're doing because the sooner you, you reach that state is the sooner you can make better decisions. And some people, just need the truth they just need they're afraid to hear it but they got to have it what's up user but once they get it they go oh okay all right it's real now it's super real 
Um, I <laughs> can't tell if I'm getting fat or just bloated. <laughs> That's a good one. Are you starting in period like me? <laughs> Fun times. Yeah, exciting. Okay, so blo <laughs> <laughs> so bloating and fat is is different. Okay, so we'll talk about fat real quick. Um, aside from what's it called? Aside from your diet. Okay, aside from how much you're eating. A lot of people that are practicing alcoholic behavior, um, they get a lot of calories from the alcohol they're consuming. Now, I've, I've spoken with someone recently who's doing a lot better, but she's, listen, listen to what I'm saying. She was drinking 93,000 extra calories because she was doing two bottles of wine every night, sometimes four if she was binging. Two bottles of wine is 37,000 calories. It's 1,200 grams of sugar, dude. Sugar, Every sugar, month. Dude. Just sugar. I'd rather stuff my whole face in a cheesecake. Yeah, right? You'd actually lose weight eating cheesecake. <laughs> so we have to look at this <laughs> and go, all right, what does my caloric intake actually look it's like? Fake sugar. Yeah, so look at this. If you're having three to five beers a day, drinks per day, that's roughly 700, it's almost a thousand extra calories every single day. If you're not moving your body, Aurora, what's up girl? If you're not moving your body, I know Aurora knows what I'm talking about too. Hey, oh my God, I yeah. almost just messaged her, him. Oh my gosh. She's in the beauty. Makeup. Yeah, dude. You've been got killing. to have a makeup tutorial. <laughs> yeah, uh, she, yeah. Uh, seriously, looking good, the, the lips. In the cheekbones. Mm. Mm. So good. She says, baby. I mean, seriously, you posted something. I'll hit you up. We don't know. I'll hit you up. So we look at this and go like, all right, well, if I'm having a thousand extra calories, like almost every night, let's just say you have a thousand extra calories every single week. So just the amount of alcohol, this is very, very low consumption is what I'm talking about. Below average drinking. This is low risk drinking. You're having a thousand extra calories a week. That's 4,000 extra calories a month. Guess how many calories is in roughly a pound of fat? 3,500. So you're drinking a pound of fat just by casually consuming alcohol. Now, of course your body is going to burn that off naturally, not all of it, but your liver is full of liquor. Your liver can't break down alcohol and focus on fat and calories at the same time. It's the filter of your body, the filter. It means that it has to get out all the bad stuff. <laughs> the poisons, the toxins, the steroids in our chicken. Our liver is going, hey, none of this needs to be here. We need to get this out, get this out, get this out, get this out. But alcohol is a foreign agent. It's a poison, it's a toxin. It's a carcinogen. It's trying to, it causes seven types of cancer. Your liver is going to prioritize it because it's not supposed to be in your body, right? So if you're drinking it, you also can't necessarily burn that, which is why when people stop drinking alcohol, they, on average, they lose about 25 pounds, 25 pounds, just by not drinking, not going to the gym, not changing their whole diet, just not drinking. So a lot of people are consuming 25,000 to 70,000 additional calories every single month. And they're going, yeah, but I'm not drinking hard liquor. Yeah, it's Sprite and vodka, bro, there's calories. <laughs> and on top of that, that's aside from the food that you're eating. Most people who drink a lot of alcohol also eat a lot of Taco Bell. When was it, you know what I'm saying? They also eat at Chipotle all the time. They also order out, not, dude. So on top of the pointless calories that alcohol provides all for you to feel like crap the next day, you're also not making the healthiest decisions and your liver can't break down a majority of the, the calories that are coming in. This is where when your liver starts to struggle, it starts to use your calories just to maintain your body, just so you don't decline even more. And I say this to go, I lost 60 pounds in 11 days because I was dying. My liver was failing, my heart was in jeopardy, dude. I had ascites, I was swollen. Dude, in 11 days, four hospitals, my body used every ounce of muscle it could and every piece of fat it could possibly get its hands on. It looked like Aurora's jawline. You got a fucking dope jawline, just so you know, girl. Like, yeah. you just, it is so cut. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> like, yeah, let's get closer. Yeah, get off. yeah. Hey, oh. Whoa. <laughs> Kimball's going a little bananas. Um, I have some questions for you really quick. Yep. Uh, really quick, help getting over pause, P-A-W-S. 
PAWS. So if you guys don't know what pause is, means post acute withdrawal syndrome. Um, everybody's going through pause. Menopause, <laughs> puppy pause, <laughs> pause. Post, post as in after. Acute means small, okay? Post acute withdrawal syndrome or symptoms is the way I like to express it. Your headaches, dude, is dehydration. That's a withdrawal symptom. It just listen to what I'm saying too. Just because you have withdrawals doesn't mean you're a full-blown addict, you're, you're, you're an alcoholic, you're, you're, it's, that's not what that means. If your body has started to prioritize alcohol as a, a legit fuel source that it can use for calories and energy and fuel, then when there's less of it in your body, your body goes, hey, <laughs> I need to get your attention. How about I give you a headache? How about I spike your anxiety? How about I give you a mood swing? How about I bring up that thing you didn't want to think about that happened to you in third grade on Tuesday when it was real dark outside and you haven't told anybody? You need to drink, dude. We need our fuel. We need our energy. So the small lingering symptoms that everybody has if they drink alcohol, especially in excess amounts, go away as you prioritize your health. You're drinking more water. This isn't a good example. This is Gatorade, okay? You're drinking more water you're actually fueling your brain and body with the, lu with the lubricant that's helping your liver process, helping your organs function, that's good for your brain and is actually used as a fuel source. As you put in better foods, like good foods, right? I'm not talking about you, when you quit that Taco Bell. <laughs> it's so good, which is why I say it. Taco Bell is so good. Um, when you quit doing those things and you start prioritizing living healthier, all of those symptoms go away. Most of the symptoms that we have in, in pause, they linger because we think that just not drinking is going to fix the problem. I know stupid amounts of people that don't drink alcohol that are worse now because they don't do anything. <laughs> they, they suck. I'm not trying to laugh. No, it's hilarious. I know so many sober people that... They suck. They still do the same stuff. I'm like, I wish you almost would. Yeah. And that I say that really too. I'm terrible. Like, that all right, sounds look. so mean, especially with someone that's like gonna die if they ever drink again or ruin their family or yeah. lose their job. I mean, that's such, that's it's, a very uh, um, stigmatizing and drastic thing to say, but it's yeah. true. I've, I've known so many people through the programs, specifically same. AKA, <laughs> where I'm like, I wish, I w yeah. I just, you we should just, drink, bro. Let's just, yeah, I'll do it for no, you, No, it's not like, that. It's, yeah, it's, you suck. Yeah, it's not that, like, you, we liked you better when you were drinking. No, it's, it's like just, you, you just suck at being. It was kind of a medication for you, bro. Like, you were actually, you were doing pretty good when you were drinking. Like, yeah, can you, you just go home? Maybe? Yeah, we're not encouraging this behavior, it's but there so is awful. this sense of going, like, just because you're sober doesn't mean you're sober. You, you, you're, you're definitely not sober from hating on you and Dry everyone drunk. else. You, you see what I'm saying? Sober is stupid if you're not using it to improve your quality of life, man. I personally feel that if you've ever struggled with sobriety, mental health, physical health, all of those things, hey. that you are more capable of being a better person, <laughs> of doing well, of helping others and improving others' lives, including your own. What's that? Um, well, Jess, that Diet Coke is not good at all either, Jess. Don't say that. Don't. don't. I know, honey, okay? I'm 42. Oh. I'm a mom. I yeah. have got a lot of hats that I wear. This is my one thing that I get to. <laughs> okay? Let me enjoy it. I'm well aware. Thank you. Diet Coke, um, dude. I, yeah. And it is so also, um, it's just, it's my vice of choice. Also, Austin Carr said hello. What up, dude? Yeah. And uh, said he doesn't, he can't believe that people live like that in sobriety, which is true. So, mm. so true. I don't get it. Like, here, here's the it, truth, dude. It's just like you're waking up. Like, you're finally, you're seeing things for how they really are. And that can be painful if you've numbed yourself for so long. But it's so, so much easier. Chris, 238 days, bro. That's that's amazing, dude. So we'll talk about these. These are actually both really cool. So Laura, you said, uh, my partner got out of rehab almost two weeks ago. And he's bored, sad, still sober. Okay. So he hasn't okay. gone through the recovery process yet. So he went to rehab um for uh, about two weeks ago okay so he probably spent four or five days there which is good um and the reason why it's usually four or five days is because that is how long it takes for alcohol to process out of your body like that's just it and what people need at that point is really just some basic medical supervision to make sure that nothing bad happens 
I can't even tell you how many people have come into the Beyond Sober program that I've worked with personally or just chatted through through Zoom that said rehab was a joke. We sat there and we watched like like Clint Eastwood movies on VHS, bro, for four days. Like I'm friends with everyone that I was in there with, but they just gave me a bunch of pills and then they kicked me out the door. I was like, yeah, you said you wanted rehabilitation. You, you're in there to make sure that nothing bad happens through your withdrawals. There was no proof that you were gonna have withdrawals that needed medical assistance to start with, but you were taught that rehab was the only solution. It's that bad, right? It's never a bad thing to go into rehab, especially if you're struggling. But the point is, is most people don't need it. This is actually why other rehab facilities won't work with me. Because I'm like, dude, they, they, there's something that they could try before needing rehab. They're like, no, you're taking money away from us. You're taking clients. That's a thousand dollars a day. That's a thousand dollars a day to be in rehab. Crazy. Beyond sober, it, it, night and day, just crazy. So part of this live will end in five minutes. Why? What are you talking about? Oh, I had to verify that I was a human. Oh, that wasn't weird. <laughs> Um, Look but at the he, motorcycle. Sorry. <laughs> but the other part of this is I've worked with rehab technicians. What that means is some of the people that have been working in the rehab facilities are struggling themselves, dude. You know how many doctors and nurses and EMTs? I got EMTs in the inbox right now. Please tell me how to get through a day when I'm saving lives, dude. But what can I do? How do I practice this stuff? I'm drinking a bottle a day. I was just working with someone that drank two gallons of liquor, dude, in two days. Two gallons in two days? That's bananas, dude. Also a vet, crazy, dude. So my point with all of this is going through rehab, going through a detox, your body's always detoxing, that's what your liver's for. Once the alcohol is out, then it's time to actually recover. Recovery is discovery. It's discovering what healing modalities are going to help you get better. Not just fixing the problem. Look, I got a boo-boo. This thing, this is a bug bite. Literally, this has been here for weeks, dude. Michigan bugs are different, okay? Now, I could heal this wound, just a little bit of ointment, throw a Band-Aid on it, done it four times already. We'll just say this thing has been to rehab four times already, but it's not stopping me from going outside it's not stopping me from ignoring the bugs. It's not stopping me from playing with the dog. It's not the bug's fault. I still wanna go outside. I still gotta take the dog out. I'm not putting on a bug suit. I'm not doing anything to, pr I'm not even putting on bug spray. That means I'm equally capable at all moments of getting bit by bugs. This same exact concept applies to alcohol. If you've been to rehab, if you've been to detox, you've been to the hospital, you've been to a retreat, and you're the exact same person, and the only difference is you're not drinking now, you're in a worse condition, technically, because you're equally capable of needing that resource again. But if you use that resource as a modality for change, and you go, I'm so glad that I'm in a safe space now, and I don't have to worry about needing a hospital, needing a doctor, needing a medication, needing a support system. I'm at home, I am safe. I can talk to people, I have programs, I have people, I have social media, dude, there's documentaries, there's YouTube, there's all these things that I could use. I have the time, I have the space, I have the focus, I have the interest. And what I'm gonna do now that I'm not in rehab is become someone that will never need rehab. That is phenomenal. That's what matters. It's what you do since your last drink that determines if you're gonna have another, another or who you're gonna be if you decide to have another. Remember, I don't care if you drink, Laura. I care about who you are while you're drinking. Are you sad and bitter and miserable and think that alcohol is a chore and you're escaping yourself? Or have you grown and you're passionate and expansive and curious and alcohol is actually adding to your life? Not because you're getting drunk, because it's actually numbing your nervous system out a little bit so you can get some extra work done. Are you using it casually? Do you respect it? Do you understand the weapon that it is? Do you understand, are you doing this from a conscious level? Are you drinking differently because you're thinking differently? Or are, you see what I'm saying? Who you are when you're drinking determines the type of results you're gonna get. Also facts. It's facts, right? It is, it's true. I guess I never really thought about it like that. That's why I'm not worried about you. You're so cute. 
<laughs> it's true. Uh, so expand on that. What do you mean? La 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 ADHD. Um, uh, this person asked a question about TCM tinctures. I'm so sorry. If you want to elaborate on that, uh, Metal Mantis, I have no idea what a TCM tincture is, so I'm so sorry I can't answer that. I don't know what that um, is. Anne Marie says, I'm, I just want to stop, but I'm terrified to do that. Uh, I don't know. Could you say more? Okay, there's that. And Devana said something how about how, how do I calm an alcoholic rage because of her mother that is aggressive and mean? Girl, I don't know how old you are, but if she's aggressive and mean and you're living with her, <laughs> just, just go. Yeah, just, just go. bounce. You can't, you can't <laughs> talk sense into someone that's an alcoholic in a rage. Rather. Oh, like, oh, like that's what it was. Yeah, so like she's that, an alcoholic in a rage? She, this person is not that commented, but her mother is. So yeah, toxic is mother. toxic, dude. Yeah, it doesn't matter. The second that I become toxic to you, is the second that you leave you just you just go we teach that in beyond sober dude like that that is yeah. dude your boundaries look you deserve to be happy you deserve to be okay. healthy seen you deserve all of the things but a majority of people are afraid to get sober they're afraid of who they are without their substance alcohol is a personality which is why those that drink together think together <laughs> I like you when I'm drinking, when we're not, if we're not on the same thing, if we're not doing the same stuff, if I'm not equally as inebriated or practicing the same toxic behavior, we don't even know each other. We don't need to know each other. I just need a drinking buddy, right? But there's, if alcohol is a personality, then who are you without it? I had to figure this out. You know who I was without alcohol? A raging, narcissistic piece of shit that hated himself and hated everyone else. I didn't even know what, I didn't even hear the word narcissist until like years into recovery. Then I was like, that was me. I did all of those things. I was that big of a dick. I was that sick. How did I become like that? Alcohol itself makes people act narcissistically. It makes them self-centered. They'll stomp over whatever. It's your fault. They're never gonna take credit. They'll black out so they don't have to take the blame. Though some people, like myself, will literally drink to the point of blackout to use it as an excuse to get away with whatever it was that they felt was necessary. Dude, it's crazy. Alcohol is a personality. So when you stop drinking it, you have to develop a personality that has nothing to do with alcohol. Nothing to do with it that takes work, that takes discovery, okay? Discovery is recovery. <laughs> you have to recover, you have to learn, you have to practice, you have to try new things, man. You gotta talk to new people, go to new places, you gotta watch new shows. If we continue sticking with only what's familiar, then we're gonna continue getting the exact same results that lead us back to a program, to a resource, to a, to a, a mentor towards whatever. We need to actively create our own interests in our own life and we need to become an active participant in our success some of us are literally going i know what this feels like if what happens if something bad happens and i don't have my safety net of alcohol what happens if my anxiety spikes and i can't take a shot or have a sip here's what's crazy man did you know dopamine releases in anticipation did you know just the thought of alcohol when you have a minor dependency releases enough dopamine to get you to pick up a drink did you know that just thinking about what you like your brain doesn't know that it's not real and it will start facilitating the chemical responses that's a reflection of what you're thinking about did you know that you could pretend like you're healthy until you are <laughs> you 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 had to pretend you were unhealthy doing unhealthy things until you got your problems or issues and now you gotta practice doing healthy things until you get those healthy results and you can say that you're actually healthy. This is just how it works, man. But there's so many of us. Austin, I see him in a building too, baby. What's up, man? It's crazy, anticipatory dopamine is nuts. Our brains are dumb. Dude, Austin, I say this all the time, bro. I'm like, your brain's an idiot, bro. It <laughs> does not know the difference between a thought and reality. It just doesn't. And it's not, I love that. And th this is one of the most powerful things that we could ever accept, dude, is you're not an idiot. Your brain is. <laughs> Your brain is just a lump of jello, dude. It's a lump of jello, right? And it's in a dark room. It has no eyeballs. It doesn't, your brain doesn't have limbs, bro. Your brain doesn't have senses. It has a nervous system. And in that system is a whole bunch of little fiddly bits 
that go through all of your limbs and your brain, this blind thing that controls everything, that knows nothing and everything at the same time, is simply trying to figure out what's happening outside the skull. That's not even you, dude. You're not even your brain. You're a whole separate force that is using the brain to kind of like make decisions. Who's moving my fingers, man? <laughs> like, there's a level of consciousness that happens when you take care of yourself, bro. So we use this and go, okay, my brain's an idiot, dude. If it's an idiot, can I trick it into taking care of me? Because it had to have been conditioned to think that I wanted to do all that toxic shit, right? That's why it said, do the thing. That's why it relayed that signal. That's why I punched him in the face, right? <laughs> Was it because I wanted to? Or is that because my brain was conditioned? That idiot didn't know any better. Damn! If I can condition myself accidentally to become someone that I don't enjoy, then is it possible that I can condition myself on purpose to become someone I do enjoy? <laughs> the answer is yes! That's why recovery is so important, dude. <laughs> you can't keep doing the same things and expect different results. Austin, yeah, it's so dumb. I can tell if I want to do something and it will believe me. 100%, dude, that's that's 100% what it's like. Yeah. Either you say you can or you can't, your brain isn't there to go like, you know what, I really don't think he wants to say that. Your brain's just going, you can't. Oh, and it's, God. that's it. This is why like, it scares me when the five-year-old is going, I hate this. I'm like, girl, you don't even know what that means. Wait until your brain figures it out. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna, that's a whole different thing. I, I, I can't do it. Say that again and see what happens. You won't do it. You're gonna preemptively shut down your progress just by using something that you don't even understand. It's crazy, dude. This is why science, right? Understanding the brain helps you understand your brain and how it's operating. Understanding the body helps you understand your own body and then understanding energy and then understanding your own energy. When you put time and, and, and create space for that, you start to become this super force in your own life. Science, what? <laughs> I was just reading that. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Science? Yeah, dude. It reminds me of the Bill Nye, like the 90s. Do you remember when that commercial would come on for him? Yeah. Did that just move again? Yeah. Oh. Well, it's because it's falling. Oh, okay. <laughs> Two ADHD people. Mm. Starting over by Macklemore is a great song about oh, recovery. Only fifteen minutes. Facts. Pretty much every song from Macklemore wins. Yeah, dude, that is super dope. Well, hey, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you. I got about fifteen minutes before I've got an intro call. If you guys have not checked out Beyond Sober, BeyondSober.org, dude. Um, clothing line is popping off, dude. I've got a whole bunch of new designs coming out. A lot of people have been in the inbox going, "Where do I get the sober merch, bro?" BeyondSoberClothing.com. You guys can hit the website up in the community section. You'll see it right here, dudes. Um, right, right. Hang on. Scroll up. This is my ADHD. Where'd the mouse go? Um, scroll down here, right? It's all success. Um, community right there. You can see it, that button, right? Beyond Sober Gear. You guys can get your hands on that, man. Um, I am so thankful for you for showing up. Emily, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah. It I had a good blast. Time, man. I really appreciate everything that you do. I appreciate thank who you, you are and what you're doing and how you're taking care of yourself and Thanks. how you're here for me and you're struggling for it and I admire you. Thanks. Yeah, it's been a rough one. <laughs> <laughs> She's killing it, dude. We're all struggling for it, doing our best with what we've got. And we we're we're all actively expanding and we're all here to support each other. Beyond Sober has given me the ability and the strength and the drive to continue showing up in my highest capacity, not just for myself, but for Emily here, for all of us as often as possible. We wanna see each other win. We grow when we feel safe and we feel seen, and we feel recognized, and more importantly, we feel heard. And so we here wanna let you know that you are all of those things, man. It sometimes feels like you don't even exist, like you don't matter, like what you're doing isn't enough. Like everything that you've tried, including the solution that was foolproof, is somehow not working in your favor for some reason. But we can promise you, as frustrating as things are, they're always working out. As long as you stay focused, stay up, stay committed, remain consistent, it all reveals itself to you. 
So with that said, that's we love you. We appreciate you. We're here for you. Don't be afraid to check my page for more details, for more resources. Austin's in here too. He's got incredible coaching programs as well. He's such a cool cat, such a great person, such a big smile, all those eyes. His sobriety journey and happiness journey is next level, man. And I really appreciate what he's doing. He's sharing an incredibly valuable and powerful perspective, which is one that we live in and thrive on, dude. We appreciate you. 100%. With that said, I'm that guy with two hats. Some people dig my vibe, man. And if I'm kind of your guy and maybe you got a crush on Polly Shore or something, you want to come hang out? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, I love you guys. Um, I got more content coming out. You see that? And that's hot. And I'm ADHD. And I've got more content coming out. You're amazing. We appreciate you. Feel free to hit that link in my bio. Take a look at Beyond Sober and grab a resource. I got you covered. Oh, I forgot to mention. Dude, I just released. What's oh, it called? It, yeah, another book. I have another book coming out. But I just released um, How to Transform Your Body Post-Alcohol. So if there's anybody that's not drinking or is actively drinking less or maybe you'll be sober tomorrow, it is the step-by-step -step guide, which is a big badass ebook I spent a long time creating for you, which is what to eat, how to move your body, how to lose the weight, how to burn the calories, how to keep your mindset up. I believe it's 11 pages, about five chapters or so. It is completely free. It is on the recovery guide page. So when you guys drop your information on the website and you take a look at the free six-step recovery guide, when you go to that page, it'll pop up and say, hey, do you wanna learn how to burn the rest of that fat now that you're not drinking? Super sick book, dude. There's a ton of people have downloaded it already, but this is my first public announcement. Also stay tuned, dude. The official Beyond Sober book will be out. We're, uh, we're making magic, dude. Hey, you, you see less of me because I'm working harder, but you're gonna start seeing me every single day. Maybe, who knows? Anyway, I love you. We appreciate you and we will see you soon. Bye-bye. Just like mom always says, take care of you, yeah? Take care of you. Take care of you. Take care of you. Yeah. <laughs>